give myself away so you can you last week if you were here last week say hallelujah hallelujah thank you i know that most of you were blessed last week for sure there's no doubt and a lot of people were inspired too We want to continue from where we stopped last week, and we're going to, but it's something kind of more. Today, we're going to be teaching on marriage covenants, marriage covenants versus mysteries. This is a serious subject, like a very serious subject. This is something that every child every person that lives on earth. This is a subject that every, every human being that lives on earth should know. This is a subject that every human being, if you're a human being, you must know this. I will repeat the title again so you understand. It's a very serious subject, okay? Marriage covenant. Marriage covenant versus missed race. Marriage covenant versus mysteries. You need to understand. Say praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, you need to understand that even though somebody stands before you and is looking at you, it looks like a human being. He has your kind of eyes. He has your kind of nostrils. He has your kind of mouth. It looks like a human being. Nothing looks suspicious. Why he's staring at you as a human being. It will take God Almighty to open your eyes to see that that person is not a human being. It's not every person you see before you that is a real person. <coughs> or put it this way. It's not everybody that stands before you or that sits with you in church that are real human beings. There are people in church, they are not real human beings. They are not children of God, they are children of Satan. Mm -hmm. Don't be, don't be, don't agitate yet. Just relax. When I'm done, I will show you scriptural proof. That will give you the understanding that it's not everybody is not human being. There is a race on there called human race. There is not, no such thing as black race. Yeah. Now, when God created man, God never created a black race. I'm serious, okay? And when God created man, God never created a white race. Amen. Now, what God created was a man called, and it's a human being, and God called them the human race. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even people who say they are white, this is not to attack any color. Even people who claim they are white, they are not white. Stand up, brother. Brother Mike, stand up, please. Look at that shirt. What color is that? White. Now, have you ever seen any human being that looks like this? With this white shirt that looks like this? So why do people call themselves white? This is a very sensitive subject that, well, that some people will be unhappy about. But this is true. No white human being on earth. And there's no black human being on earth. Amen. Have you ever seen? Can you okay? Can you stand up, please? Can you look at the pants he's wearing? Yeah. Look at his pants. Come forward, please. Give him a clap of. Yeah. Look at his pants. What color is this pants? Yeah. Have you ever seen a human being like this color? <laughs> Hello, no. church. Have you ever seen a human being with this color? Yeah. You will run from such a human being if you see a human being like this. Yeah. There's no such black man on earth. Why do you call yourself black man? You see, we have been confused by men and women that have gone ahead of us. And that's why we always fight each other, fighting for superiority. White supremacy or black supremacy? Ain't nothing like that. There is only one race called human race. After the human race, there is another race again called the new creation race. Now, the new creation race is superior to the human race. When you come from Adam, you are from a race called the human race. Now, that human race 
Spirit is corrupted. And so that's why God had to make it possible by sending his son to die for the remission of sin that it will be possible to have a new race. And that's why Paul said, if any man will come into this vineyard, or into this kingdom, he will be, he will be born again. In other words, he will be rebated. At this point, I am, no, I am not longer a black man or a white man as you claim or have been calling me, but I am not a, another kind of man called new creation. You have to understand the difference. You are either a new creation race or a human race. There's no such thing as black race. God never created any black man. If you met with God and said, why did you create a black man? God will tell you, son, I didn't create a black man. If you meet a man, if you meet God today and ask God, Lord, why did you create some people white? And God will say, what are you saying, son? I didn't create anybody white. I created only one man called human. Now, I told you, I said, today's subject is very sensitive and powerful, and it's a subject everybody should know because it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's about intermarriage. It's about intermarriage. I'm going to teach you about intermarriage. Why you should be careful on who you marry. You don't just pick a guy. It doesn't matter if you saw the guy in the church. There are devil's children in church. Don't get it. Don't be, don't be, don't be deceived. There are, devils, there are devil's children in the choir. But we don't have none of them here. Say amen. amen. We shall sure know we don't have them here. Hallelujah. Say amen to them. Amen. Do we have them in our choir? We don't. How do we know? Because I know how to fetch them out. Yes. When I see you, I can tell you whether you're a human being or not. When your eyes are anointed, you can see what the other man cannot see. I stood before a lady one day and I was looking at her and interest shockingly my eye opened. And what I see from here to this place was a serpent's head. Yeah. This is not a movie. This is not, I wasn't sleeping. I'm not saying I was in a dream. I'm looking at her and I'm seeing a serpent head on top of her head. And from here downwards, she was a, a human being. But from here, I was still talking. And I was looking at her. She didn't know what I was seeing. And I was seeing the serpent. The head was a serpent. Now you will see why Jesus said, you are from your father, the devil. Now you can understand why, devil, why Jesus never preached to those folks. How could I know that she was from the devil? If not that, God opened my eye to see. Yeah. Now you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be in danger if you go for... And she was a very beautiful woman. Physically, she's beautiful. Like, very beautiful. Imagine a brother we are... And she was a... She is in a church. I'm not talking... I'm not saying I was in a nightclub and I saw a lady. I'm saying, looking at her. This is a church member. Who God opened my eyes to see that this person you are looking at is not a human being. Do you still wonder why they manufactured in Wahoo? Is it Wahoo they call it? Wahoo lab? Is it Wahoo lab? The lab where they manufacture COVID-19. Although you don't know that COVID-19 was manufactured by man? Yes. <laughs> oh, you didn't know? Okay, some people know that. COVID-19 was not manufactured by some spirit no. just alone. These were manufactured by men. These men are not human beings. A man that will sit in the lab, or men that will sit in the lab, and organize, and manufacture, and fashion a disease to send it to men that, will, that killed millions of human race. Those are not human beings. There is no human being that will manufacture a disease to kill another human being. I'll give you the proof. These ones are called sons of perdition. That's what Jesus called it. You know what source of perdition is? Source of perdition is a son from hell. When God says you are a son of perdition, it means you are not from this earth. You are from another planet. Hell. That's where Judas came from. They would not betray our master. Jesus said, everyone you have given me, I have kept them. Except the son of perdition. Yeah. Go and study who a son of perdition is. That's the son from hell. No wonder he could betray the master. Have you ever wondered why when they were giving off, you know, Jesus, had, he was even Jesus' treasurer. He used to keep the church money. And at one point, 
when the lady broke an expensive alabaster box on Jesus so that he could anoint Jesus before Jesus' burial because he was going to be late to anoint Jesus. There will not be time to anoint Jesus. So in the realm of the spirit, the spirit realm already understands that there will be no time to anoint him before burial. So that's why this woman was led by the spirit to break the alabaster box. To Thank you. And another day I can teach on that topic, the reason why that had to happen. Anyway, when the woman was anointing Jesus, the guy was infuriated. He was so upset. Yeah. He called, listen, look at what he did. Yeah. I'm trying to show you the difference between human being and non-human being. He called out the rest of the disciples and said, come on, don't you think this is wrong? We could have sold this thing and used it to help the poor. Mm. Trying to let the people know that, listen, we care about the poor. That guy don't care about the poor. Jesus don't care about the poor. So, don't you think it's a waste? That's what it, I'm not making things up. The word they used was that it was a waste on Jesus. Do you mean to anoint Jesus with oil is a waste? Do you know who Jesus is? Jesus is God. How dare you say to anoint him is a waste? This is the author of life. The life you have on your inside and the one I have on my inside is Jesus. We are product of the world. The Bible said, of his own will be cast in us by the word of truth that liveth my body forever. So the word of truth gave back to you. We are actually the offspring of the word of God. That means we are the seed of the word of God. That means we are children of God indeed. And the one who, who made life, who gave life, a man, not a man really, because he was not a human, a real human being. He was from hell. He was arguing and convinced other disciples to murmur and argue that it is incorrect to anoint Jesus. That too much money was spent on Jesus. Now that money could have been used to help the poor. And Jesus being a very meek person, like very humble, if you meet Jesus, you will love him. He's a very humble man. He talked to his other friends. He said, listen, Judas don't care about the poor. He's a thief. He always steals from the boss. And we never knew, the disciples never knew that Jesus, Judas was a thief, that he was always stealing from the offering box. Until Jesus had an opportunity to reveal it, to reveal, to expose him to the disciples. And said, Judas is a thief. Judas is a thief. What Jesus was saying that Judas is from hell. Go and check the term, the T O R, the term of reference. How Jesus described the devil. John ten ten. He said he is a thief. That's one of his term of reference. If you want to define the devil, he is a thief. He is a destroyer and he's a killer. That's his mission. He has no other mission. Why do you think he mobilized? He saw Jesus. It was not about the money. Didn't you see after he got the money, he threw it away, he never spent it on himself? Judas never spent the money on himself. He trashed it. To let you know it was not about the money. I told you when they will attack your finances, it's not about your finances. It's about your soul. He's trying to get your attention. He knows that when your finances are is, is affected, You'll be distracted to serve God. And then you'll be wondering how to fix your finances now. And then you're going to give me excuses why you don't want to come to church. So, devil don't spend money. He don't use credit card. When he attacks your finances, it's not because he needs your money. It's because he wants to distract you. He wants to distract your focus yes, from God. Yes, yes. So when he touch your money, <laughs> where's my money? The money is, the money is affected. Now you're going to be running health and scatter on how to fix your finances. When they call you for job service, oh, I don't have time for God right now. i got to fix my finances. You see what the devil is going to do to you? Now you would notice it's not about the money after all. It was about your soul. What did John say? I wish I go home to you that you prosper. Be in health. And what? And your soul prosper. To let you know that your soul is the most important thing. So he said... If you're prospering, if, you're, if you see someone say, oh, guess what? I bought a brand new car. I bought me a new house. 
I mean, I live in a, in a luxurious house. Look at the beach. I live close to the beach. If they brag to you like that, it's a good thing. But just investigate their heart condition. Where is their soul? In the, in the realm of the kingdom, where is their soul positioned? Is their soul headed towards hell? Or is their soul headed to God? So it's not about that you are rich. Is your soul rich? You have money. You are busting of your... Jesus said a man's needs, sorry, a man's possession or property doesn't consist in the abundance of things he possesses. So it's not about what you got or what you got, it's about your soul. Where is your soul heading to? As you sit right now, where are you going? What I mean is, where is your soul headed to? If the last trumpet sound, as he said, are you going to go with us? He said, at the last trump, what will happen? The dead in Christ will arise first. And we that are alive will be caught together to meet with him in on in the end. Are you going to go with us? So that determines the way your soul is headed to. Your soul must prosper. You must be concerned about the prosperity of your soul. Then how much money you have in your bank account. There are pastors that will be on the pulpit and the trumpet will sound. They will be led to their church where we go. They will be on the pulpit while they are preaching. Hot. Yes. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. And trumpet will sound. They will still be shouting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And church will will just sleep. The pastor will still be on the mic. <laughs> Because it's gonna be, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be, and he will be, he will react, he will know. By then he said, Brother Mike is gone, Brother Mike wife is gone, Brother Shedak is gone, Brother Shedak wife is gone. Uh, oh, he will know is this is the rapture. He will know because he knows about the rapture. And then he will feel sorry for himself because he had to wait for second flight. And second flight is not easy. A lot of people are not gonna make the second flight because it's gonna be tough on people. Then the government that you are so in bed with will turn against you. You love the government more than God. Watch what they will do to you after rapture. Yes, you love the government so much. You trust in them so much. They tell you what marriage should be. They define marriage to you. And you took that definition of marriage. And you abandoned the definition of God's marriage. How God defined marriage. Today, I'm going to say some things that will upset your mind. When I mean upset your mind, it will transfigure your mind. And you should see marriage differently. Why is God so important about, about marriage? Why is marriage? Think about it. Why is marriage so important to God? Why can't I just marry who I like? Why can't I just marry a lady I fall in love with? When I finish with you today, you will, you will, you will think again on who to marry. If you are not married yet. And if you are here or you are listening online and you are about to get married, this is time for you to Watch it and pray effectively and make sure you follow these steps before you get into that marriage so you don't fall into a ditch. God bless you. So write on your notepad, marriage covenant versus mixed race. Mixed race, I, mixed race in the sense that there are people that are not human beings and because they are not really human beings, God is concerned that you must not join yourself with them. Now, have you ever wondered why is it that in the Old Testament, I'm sure you must have wondered why God was very, very in a certain way that he would just say, destroy the whole city, kill the animals, kill the king, kill the babies. Now, are you not surprised that God, who we say, which the Bible also showed us, that he is a loving God. He would order people to go and kill some other human being, quote and unquote. He would say, kill the king. Kill the animals. He will even say, kill the children. Do not spare the children. How will a loving God tell you not to spare the children? Have you ever wondered why? Today you will know why God always tells you. He will tell the king. Why did he tell King Saul? King Saul. If you like to develop your Christian faith in the Lord, kindly subscribe for more insightful messages. Thank you.